Ryan. What's up, dude? How's it going? Good. Ryan. Ryan, I'm sorry. I'll shake hands. Okay, sorry. Go outside and talk to me real quick. What's that? Those are oxys that are melted down. My mom does them. Alright. Can you get the right hand silent? Okay. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You know, like the presence of an attorney will be with you before and during any questions. If you can have a phone, attorney will be with you. Go to a pool and jump into it. And then go all the way to the bottom. Just stay down there as long as you can. When your lungs start to turn on fire, and when your veins start pumping battery acids, you shoot your way to the top when you just can't stand it anymore. From point A at the bottom to point B of the surface, that is what a drug addict experiences in terms of the need for it. It's a matter of survival. America, every day on average is 91 people a day die of an opioid-related overdose. It affects everybody, um, from every social economic status, you know, high school age kids, uh, college age kids, uh, adults. Someone who's a gymnast, someone who's a football player, they get prescribed opiate pain medications. Then that can escalate into an addiction. I've always been a gymnast, and I competed through the age of 15 until I had an injury. I channeled myself, my energies, and my problems into gymnastics. And to lose that, absolutely I needed a replacement, and I very quickly found one in the form of a pill. I was prescribed opiates. Years ago, they never really prescribed opiates for much of anything, except for very, very serious pain. As time went on, pharmaceutical companies had to market them somehow, and they pushed them out to the general practitioners. Now we're the biggest user of hydrocodone in the world. I'm an advocate of the fact that opiates do have a legitimate medical purpose. How do you really discern which person is there just to get opiates to get high versus someone who has legitimate pain. It's very difficult. There's a lot of money to be made on people being sick. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made in prescription medications, especially opioids. It doesn't fix the problem, it masks the problem. As a prescription, um, they think it's okay because they're getting it prescribed from a doctor, but what happens once they stop getting that prescription filled, they start looking for cheaper ways of getting their fix. The first time I was about 11, my mom had given me one to, to alleviate the pain that I was in. You know, I got prescribed them when I got my wisdom teeth removed. And it was still fun back then, but it quickly turned dark. All I could think about was, how was I going to get the pills? How was I going to get the coke? How was I going to get the ecstasy in the bottle? It's just a constant cycle of get money, get drugs, get high, get money, get drugs, get high. I can remember being in my room with my girlfriend. We had just gotten done snorting a bunch of Oxycontin. And I looked up into the mirror and I hated what I saw. I saw this empty void inside my eyes. I asked, are you even having fun anymore? And she said, no, I'm not. And I said, me neither. I don't even like doing this anymore. And then we crushed up another pill and we snorted it. The addiction in America is, it's, it's an epidemic. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. the trail of bodies that are being left behind by this, both from pharmaceutical grade drugs that are being abused to the illicit pharmaceuticals, the fake drugs that are coming up through the border. It's killing a lot of people in America. I could remember the smell of gun oil because I had just cleaned it. 
and I remember how cold the steel was against my temple. Pistol to the temple, pressure on the trigger, and I, I didn't do it. I don't know why I didn't do it, but that's where it took me, you know? That's where it took me. Addiction is a sickness, especially with opiates and, and heroin. It's so strong that people are always one step away from being addicts again. With addiction, you've got a stigma of, I do this because I want to. Yes, I made a choice to shoot heroin for the first time, but at some point in time, it wasn't a choice anymore, and that's the point in time that I started stealing from the people that I loved and hurting the people that I loved. Am I under the delusion that I'm safe and that I will never get high again? No. Uh, I mean, it's been five and a half years and I've never once said I will never shoot heroin again. For me, that's just not reality. But I do certain things on a daily basis that allow me to continue to stay sober. One of the greatest misconceptions about addiction is that you get over it, that you stop being an addict somehow. There is no graduation date for recovery. Healthcare providers, they need to be really cognizant about you know, how much and, and the types of opiate pain medicines we prescribe. This epidemic will continue to grow exponentially, hands down. I have no doubt in my mind about that. And it will if we do not begin to acknowledge the problem. We can't arrest our way out of this problem. The courts can't prosecute these people. We can't lock them all up in our prisons and our jails. It's expensive to do that, let alone to deal with the addiction issues that come with it, the treatment issues. There should be outrage across America about what this epidemic is doing.